hell? He flicked a switch? And he's a, someone else. Hey guys, it's me, World's Worst Gamer. And today, on Comic Corner, we're going to continue our series of The Secret Wars 2. We're continuing with uh, number 4 in a 9 issue limited series. And uh, usually I have the actual comic with me here on my keyboard to read for you. But uh, I am missing this one comic of the series. Issue number 4. So we're going to do it through a PDF reader. Alright. So here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Beyond time, space, and the Myray dimension lies another universe to which our own is a droplet of water to the ocean. The one who is all in that other universe has learned of our universe and has come here to walk among us, that he might come to understand the essence of humanity. The fragile earth trembles beneath his feet, dreading his godlike omnipotence. Stanley presents Secret Wars 2. Love is the answer. She is Sharon Ng, Harris, actress, jet set socialite, internationally renowned beauty, but right now fame and fortune have no meaning to her. So lost is she in love with the man who holds her so firmly and kisses her so sensuously. Nobody does it better. Sharon Ng doesn't know who is kissing her, not really. A man, she thinks a wonderful, incredible, unforgettable man who somehow seemingly magically found her and captured her heart. It is no man embracing her, however. It is one from beyond, and he will be the death of her. I must be leaving now, Sharon. I have other business. It's been very nice being with you. When will I see you again? I don't know. I've never... I'm never gonna see you again, am I? I don't think so. I love you. Do you know that? Though I've only known you for a short time, no one has ever meant so much to me. I've never met some anyone like you before. I don't even know your real name. You said you are called the Beyonder by some... What kind of a name is that? Do you have a name? No. Or... Goodbye. Seconds later, outside the expensive Washington, D.C. hotel that is the temporary residence of the one from beyond. Your car, sir. Careful. Traffic's pretty heavy today. Oh, that won't bother me. Soon. Jeez, they must be filming a commercial or something. Look! I gotta get one of those. What is that? Meanwhile, at nearby Andrews Air Force Base. What is it? Judging from its speed and altitude, sir, I'd say it's a cruise missile, but the heat signature is all wrong. Whatever it is. The fighters we scrambled out are intercepted any minute now. <laughs> and I'm at 10,000 feet now. It's a, it's a warm, calm, quiet, and here behind the wheel, it's easy to think and reflect. Why are so many humans in this country to take a drive to relax? During the time I've been on Earth, I've learned a lot about the ways of humans, and I'm beginning to understand the nature of desire, which seems to be the basis of most of the activity going on in this universe. I've dabbled with various means of gratification with mixed results. I think I'm ready to begin more pointed experiments. On this tape, I'll record the first steps of my experiments. While flying up here, I quickly scanned the desires of every living creature on Earth, as I expected most fall into pretty basic and predictable patterns. There are exceptions, though. There is a, there's a creature, or the remains of one, lying virtually dead, far, far underground beneath English countryside. He is, or was, Algram the Elf. He fell into a lava pit while battling against the Asgardian Thor. The mystical protective properties of his elfin armor keep him ever so slightly alive, though his body is rather thoroughly cooked and shriveled. Of all the higher life forms on Earth, he is the most single-minded of 
purpose, and perhaps it is his one all-consuming desire that kept him alive as much as his armor did. He desires the death of his arch-enemy Thor, and that alone. I think I should restore Algrim to health and vigor, giving him far more power than before. There! It will be interesting to watch him fulfill his desire, and when he does, see what his reaction will be. Hmm. He senses that Thor is in the United States, and he is walking across the ocean bottom to reach him. I could transport him to his goal, but no, I think I'll let him do it on his own. I've got plenty of time. Let's see, who else was interesting? The little girl Cindy Adams, who by strange chance has the essence of evil alien being called a dire wraith inside her brain. She desperately wants it out of her mind. And close by her, a woman named Brandy Clark fervently desires to be transformed into a cyborg warrior so she can be reunited with her cyborg warrior lover, Rom, who is on an interplanetary quest. And that happens, actually. And then there's Benjamin Grimm, also known as the Thing, who desires are confusing as well as unusual. Ailing being called the Silver Surfer desires freedom from Earth. He believes that impenetrable barrier holds him here. United States President Ronald Reagan desires a tax reform a certain way. Captain America desires the, that the ideals he cherishes become reality throughout the world. Firebase 1, we have the boogie in sight. Holy! Blue Leader, do you see what I see? I think so. Lulia, report. What is that thing? It's a Lamborghini contact, sir. There was a pilot, a uh, driver. He's talking into a tape recorder and uh, chopping vegetables and cousin art. Said that right? Probably did. Lulia, that car is heading in the general direction of White House at missile speed. Take no chances. Bring it down. How, sir? Give it a flat. God darn it, I don't know, just do it. <laughs> Give it a flat. Is it okay? The picture, you're supposed to see my webcam and everything. Thrack! Got him! Yow! That was rude! Wait a minute, pal. Hold still, I want to talk to you. Firebase 1, I don't know how, but suddenly I'm dead in the air. I'm not moving. And the pilot of the target craft is approaching on foot at 10,000 feet. Mister, that was uncalled for. My car is a mess now. Who, who are you? What are you doing driving around up here? Why were you chopping carrots? That? Well, I like gadgets. They just fascinate me. That's all. Don't change the subject. Now about my car. I've got an idea. Moments later. This is all right. Hey, maybe I'll fly out to Denver and drop in on Owen and Marsha. And just to make sure nobody bothers me this time, I'll make this crate invisible to radar. <laughs> Meanwhile. Daddy, we, we got business falling out of the sky. Look, what's this? How did... Who are you, Evil Knievel? I'm a pilot. You a USAF. I'm, uh, just dropping this off for somebody else. Some time later. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Oh, no place to land. Unless I help a little there. Screech! Where would that jack come from? It must have just landed. Here? How? We're the pilot. That's an F-16. What's it doing on our street? Don't touch it. The engines are hot. Find the pilot. Where is he? Pardon me, but may I give you my card? I wrote my home number on the back. Call me sometime. Why, thanks. 
Wow, talk about brazen. He's a heart stopper, though. I guess I don't blame her. Sha thought of that first. What a total hunk. <laughs> Shortly at the modest apartment of Von Reese and Martian Rosenberg, also known as Summons the Molecule Man in Volcana. Hiya. Hey, Beyonder. Long time no see. Come on in. Then that must be your airplane outside. Yes. Oh, well. I hope you don't mind if I... Oh. oh, I hope you don't mind if I surrenderously disintegrate it. See, Marsha... Oh, sorry. I hope you don't mind if I surrendipulously disintegrate it. See, Marsha and I are trying to be discreet. Bye, Snickups. I'm not off to dancer size and blubber away. Bye, lovely. See you, Marsha. Yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah, that jet was just a mite too conspicuous. Sorry. So, what can I do for you? I've been looking into this desire thing, and I think I'm catching on. Though it's still a very new and difficult concept for me, but what I really want to know more about is love. Your guidance was very helpful to me when I first arrived in this universe. I thought maybe you could explain love to me. Me? Explain love? Wow. Gee, I used to think it was just like... It was just liking someone very, very much, but that's not it at all. All I can do is tell you about Marsha and me. She's taught me about love. She's a very loving, giving person. Soon as we met right away, she cared about me. Eventually, she grew to care about me even more than she cared about herself. Not because I'm the molecule man and I could do anything for her. No, it wasn't a business deal. With her... Training her affection for mine, or for the things I could easily provide? No, sir. It was because she saw something worthwhile inside me, long before I did. I was pretty screwed up back then. But when I finally stopped being wrapped up in my own self-doubt and hate and fear, I finally was able to give it to. Love is always good, but it's nice when it's mutual. It can make you so happy, and the more you give, the more you have to give. It's amazing. It's limitless. Yeah. I understand now. Thank you. Glad I could help. But just remember, beyond her, love is only good if it's real. No cost. No obligation. Love gone wrong can be dangerous, even to guys like us. Be careful out there. I shall. In a flash, the one from beyond takes his leave. Can't snap. Tell him to back to his hotel suite only to find... Sharon! Immediately he senses that... She is not breathing, nor is her heart beating, and that self-inflicted uh, barbiturate overdose is the cause. Huh. She's dead by human medical standards, but not beyond the reach of my power. Uh, my head. What? I'm alive. I'm alright, but yonder, you came back to me. No, I simply came back. This love you profess for me, why do you feel it? Why? Because of what you do for me, what you do to me. You bring me ecstasy like no one else could. You're wonderful to me. Ah, a business deal. What? I want to experience real love. I must find a partner, one of these, perhaps. How are you doing that, making pictures in the air? Hey, some of them are men. <laughs> why not? I am... Innately of neither gender, I could just as easily take female form. So. Oh. <laughs> but, no. I adopted a, the male form first, and I'm used to it. How do you do these things? Who are you? Oh, never mind. Let's see. A suitable woman. Hmm. Ah, that one. Her? Why her? I'm as pretty as she is. What's wrong with me? Your love is not real. You bargain out of way in return for how I make you feel. I only consider a woman whose love cannot be bought at any price. She stood up among them because she also is a mutant, perhaps the most powerful ever to walk this planet. That intrigues me as well. Please, go now. Alright. Outside in the corridor. I don't believe it. I, I just can't believe it's over. This time is finished forever. He already has s someone else just like that. I'm nothing to him. Forever should be cast aside. 
How dare he? How dare he? Crash! Moments later, as the elevator arrives, what a strikingly beautiful woman, and the way she carries herself, so erect, so proud, like a queen. Meanwhile, somewhere in Arizona, a pickup rumbles along the highway bound for Colorado. Inside our AZ Chase bounty hunter, his prisoner, one Allison Blair, a.k.a. the Dazzler, and his dog, or what passes for one. Again, I'm sorry about this, Miss Blair. In a way, I'm actually glad you're taking me, Mr. Chase. I like to get whatever charges there are against me cleared up. To be honest, I doubt that there'd be any charges if you weren't a mutant. That seems to be a mite unpopular these days, just because you can do things that aren't exactly... Poof! Hmm. Hey! Good evening, uh, Miss Blair. Hey! Oh, see, where am I? Relax, you're still in the solar system. Please allow me to enter. Stay back! <laughs> Wherever you are, just keep your distance and start talking. What's going on here? Right after I undo the flash blindness, your light causes. What a wonderful power you have, absorbing sound, storing the energy, and then being able to release it as light. May I call you Allison? Call me a taxi! I want out of here! Who are you? What is this? First, let me show you who I am. Look into my eyes, please. Huh? Oh. Images appear in Allison Blair's mind's eye at the one from beyond recounts his past. I come from another universe, beyond yours. There I was all the entirety of existence. I knew of nothing except myself. Until the event of great magnitude in your universe that opened up a pinhole in mine. Through the pinhole I observed your universe, especially the Earth. I was fascinated. Eventually I came here and took human form that I might come to experience and understand the ways of things here. I have learned much in my few days here. Today I learned of something called love. I would like to experience it. Of all the women in the world, I have chosen you. Oh, so suddenly it's Valentine's Day and I'm elected. Huh? Do I get any say? Oh, sorry, I was supposed to say it like a girl. Do I get any say in this? Of course. That's nice. I like to get to know someone before. I mean, love isn't something you, that you can rush. Rush. Wonderful. Let's get to know each other. Hey, where are we? I thought I'd give you a little tour of some of the more interesting places in the galaxy while we talked. Oh, well. Not that your little portable hideaway is charming, but how about putting me back on Earth? Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Arctic. Oh no! <laughs> or, sorry, the Antarctic. The penguins. We're in the Arctic! Okay, the Arctic then. <laughs> Antarctic! <laughs> okay, the Antarctic then. Derp! What? Wanna cuddle up with me in this bear skin? It's nice and cozy in here. <laughs> so how to get to know someone? Oh, pop! Lovely evening, isn't it, ma'am? It's you again. Is this better? I'm afraid I don't know much about courtship yet. Flowers, my lovely lady. No, thank you. Hey, you again. I'll take those flowers, friend. Please, Allison, accept these flowers from me as a gift. Sorry I abducted you and frightened you. Another you? I don't believe this. Would you believe real? At carnival time? It's, it's beautiful, spectacular. Would you like to dance? Everyone else is. Yes, I mean, no. This isn't normal. Oh, P Paris? Oui. Would you please cut it out? I'm sorry, Ma Sherry. I'm just trying to make you smile. Yeah, well, I'm sorry I shouted. I didn't mean to make a scene here, but... No problem. We're alone. Everyone here is me. Good grief, they are. <laughs> Look, 
This is all very flattering, but you're so powerful, so omnipotent. And so you fear me, just as humans fear you because you are a mutant and you're more powerful f than they. Why? I mean, you no harm, do you? I guess that is hypocritical, isn't it? Touche. Let's go one more place. A quiet place where we can talk alone. I know that you're still afraid. Ever since I appeared on this world, people have been afraid of me. Why, the first day I was here, Captain America, Iron Man, the X-Men, and you, as I recall, traced me to Los Angeles, ready to attack me if necessary, worried about what I might do. I admit I did a foolish thing early on, until I knew better, but nothing so terrible. And here I am now, wanting only to court you. Is that so bad? I guess I haven't gone about it in the usual way, but I'm not your usual... Oh, guy. I'm supposed to talk like a guy there. And you're not exactly ordinary yourself. In fact, while we've been dating, Allison, I took the liberty of looking into your soul. But what I found there was greater and more beautiful than I dreamed possible. It's astounding, paradoxical. All at once, you are but a tiny speck of protoplasm, an infinitesimal moat in the whole of the universe, and yet inside the essence of your being, you are more, it seems, than the universe itself. I am odd, but I do not fear you. Give me a chance, Allison. That's all I ask. Right, some down, some down, we go out, don't say, just like that. The next morning. Oh boy, I've worn this question out lately, but where am I? More importantly, how did I get here? To our master's house of the south of France, apparently. You had a very busy day yesterday. You must have fallen asleep. The master brought you here. We we'll put you to bed. Bonjour, mon bon, bon, mademoiselle. Shortly. Good morning. Good morning, Allison. You're just in time for breakfast. And this is wonderful. Everything is wonderful. You're wonderful. It's sort of overwhelming in a way. I know I've decided to work on that. I'm not going to control myself. You know, play by the rules a little more. For instance, today I'm going to bring you a gift, and I'm going to earn it. But that's not necessary. If it were necessary, it wouldn't be a gift. While I'm gone, feel free to use my complete music library, sound equipment, and recording studio. I also have a staff of musicians and even instructors on standby for your convenience. See you later. But And at the West Edmonton Mall in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. <laughs> where I'm from. Where moments ago, a pitch battle between the Canadian super team called Alpha Flight and their arch enemies Omega Flight ended with a strategic uh, withdrawal by the Omegans. On my wall right here, the issue is on my wall right here. Issue number 28, Alpha Flight. Boom. Look, someone's materializing out of thin air. See, issue number 27. Issue number, oh, that's issue number 28, oops. Do you think it's another member of Omega Flight? A new one? Clearly he's no ordinary shopper, Heather. Until we are certain whose side he's on, he must. We must assume he is a potential threat. You're right, Shaman. Let's subdue him as gently as possible so we can question him. Let's go! Hello, Alpha Flight. You're just the people I'm looking for. Grab him! I, of course, realize why you feel obligated to attack me, and I know that there is nothing I can say which will convince you that this is not necessary. You would suspect treachery. I could simply will your cooperation, but I'm trying to get by using less power. I think it might be more satisfying. So, here we go, the hard way. North Star Puck, you first! <laughs> Using North Star as a missile to bring down his sister Aurora, who, like him, has super speed, is somewhat fitting, isn't it? 
It's also spectacular since they create a blinding flash when they touch. An interesting phenomenon. How do you know so much about us? Who are you? Sorry. I am from beyond. I have the power far greater than the sum of all power in existence in this universe. And I know what I choose to know. Uh, not really, but being effortlessly bounced away clears up one area. You can just can't argue with empir empirical evidence. Does that answer your question box? I'm supposed to read that first. Ah, Snowbird, who can change at will into beasts of awesome power. How about if I just make you sleep? Impressive, you have yet to reckon me with. Reckon with me, however. Shaman, just the man I need to talk to. We'll talk after I use an artifact from my medicine pouch to render you helpless. Well, actually, I'm here to borrow you for your pouch for a moment. What? No! Relax, I'll just keep it for a second, and I intend to pay for use, using it in a manner of speaking. The pouch, it's growing. Correct. And here's your payment in advance, Shaman. My daughter, Talisman, you drew her forth from the mystic void inside the pouch, where she was trapped. You saved her. Right. It was easy once I enlarged the pouch. She would fit through the mouth. Talisman, she's back. And our strange foe did it. Now I'll restore the pouch to its normal size and fish out what I came for. Mister, we must talk. Okay, but only for a moment. I'm in a hurry. And so, seconds later, it's time for me to depart. Awesome! Half a world away. Please, Mademoiselle, please, you must not leave before the Madamster returns. Sorry. Allison, you're leaving? What's wrong? Look, I brought you a present, just like I promised. No, thank you. Somehow I'll go to get myself a, on a new flight to New York. That's all. I want... Eek! Is this okay, or would you rather be uptown? Uh, I'd rather you didn't do that anymore. Look, I just can't deal with this. Uh, uh, honest, I'm afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you anymore, but... I don't want trips and presents and things so easily. Okay, no present. It's just a trinket anyway. Clink, clink. Look, don't get me wrong. Yesterday was really beautiful. Beautiful beyond words. I get chills just thinking about it. I don't know, I could very easily just lose myself in you. But I've got a life to live, and I want to get back to it. I've got dreams. I know. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen. I give you the incomparable, bear, comparable Alice Blair, the Dazzler. <sighs> Go ahead, Allison, sing. Listen to them cheer. Sing for them. It's your dream. It's what you want. Not this way. But this is real. Those are real people. I was very careful to do this correctly. I printed and sold tickets. I... Please put me back where you... Where we were a minute ago. Okay, I'm sorry. Now I feel lousy. Shall I call you a taxi? No, you probably whip one up out of thin air. You're just too all powerful. You're exactly correct, Miss Blair. He's too powerful and too dangerous for the Avengers to allow to roam free. The Avengers! Captain America just said that, dummy. Can't you hear? Let's see just how mighty this Beyonder is. Have a the knave! Hey, Hercules, take it easy. You're ripping my shirt. Stop, leave him alone. He wasn't doing anything wrong. If you really want to know, Herc, I was... I'm as mighty as I want to be. Ow! The wasp, well, your little stings are annoying. I'll grant you that. Annoying? The nerve! I'll have you know that while it looks 
It looks easy weezy this full power bioelectric thing from flat in a house. Apparently you're just more durable than most houses. Nice eyes too. And you dress so well. Ha! Huh. I'm fast enough to grab your shield out of thin air, Captain America. And ow! What? And after I admired your fashion sense? Now I'm tempted to use it to swat a certain bug leg nuisance. Sorry, I was supposed to read that second. What? And after I admired your fashion sense? I meant for you to catch the shield, Beyonder, and now that you're momentarily un undecided about what to do with it, Avengers attack! Press him, give him no quarter! Beyonder, who does your hair? I just love it. I honestly regret fizzling your perm like this. Uh, uh, ow! Do not split him in twain. Want my sword, Black Knight, till Hercules hath pummeled him soundly. Get away from me! Captain Marvel, nail him! I hear you, Cap! Stop it, what's wrong with you people? What's wrong with us? What's wrong with you, lady? That you can't see what's wrong about this guy being in our universe. Cthulhu! That didn't stop him. Unbelievable! Hardly. It's not even surprising. It was only an electromagnetic energy blast. The whole darn spectrum at maximum intensity. Shoot, it's up to you, Star Fox. Yes, but I prefer a more subtle approach, especially now since brute force is getting us nowhere. If he has a humanoid brain, then I can psionically stimulate his pleasure centers and mail him out, as She-Hulk would say. Zap! Hey, wow, ow! You hit him high, I hit him low, Hawks. He doesn't know whether to laugh or cry, he's completely helpless. Nice work, Star Fox. What are you going to do to him? Why, we must make certain he menaces our universe no longer and never again. We have no cho- We have no choice. Then neither do I, Avengers. Look out! Yeah! D Dazzler! Thank you, Allison. If it weren't for you... Are you all right? Uh, I think I can manage to hold them off long enough for us to escape. <laughs> Thank goodness. Dazzler and the one from beyond vanished in a burst of light, teleporting away from their assailants, who promptly fade into nothingness, and on a now familiar peak in Nepal. We made it. That was close. They were going to kill you. You saved my life, Allison. I'm very gr grateful. Hmm. You know, it's not like the Avengers would be so belligerent, especially Captain America. And now that I think about it, you could have spirited us way earlier if there was really any true danger. Alright, I admit it. They weren't the real Avengers. I faked it. But you were concerned about me, weren't you? You really do care for me, do, don't you? Yes, I do, but I'm just a tiny speck of protoplasm, remember? And you're something else. I can fix that. Hey, what are you doing? Fixing it. Why is this elation I feel? The skinniness. I'm a glow. As if a trillion trillion suns were suddenly ablaze in the center of my soul. It is because I am giving you the only thing I can give you that truly matters. Power. Of that which is me, I have given half to you, Allison. Now we are equals. Now nothing stands in our way. Come, let us love one another. She is still transfixed by wonder, and he reaches out to her. They touch, and they are one in ways beyond the can of every being universe. Time stands still in all of the splendor of their union. An instant, or perhaps an aeon, is lost. Then suddenly... No! Allison, you mustn't leave me. Allison! She flees, and in a microsecond is half a world away, driven by desperation. He catches her in the skies over Dallas. 
Why do you flee? There is cosmic ecstasy in our being as one. Feel it. You must feel it too. It is glorious. Wonderful. Do not deny it to me. No, no, please stay away. Allison, R. Stay away. I do not want to hurt you. But I don't love you. I can't love you. When we touched, I knew. It isn't real. And no pleasure, no power can make it so. I won't trade my love, my soul for this. I don't want your power. Out. Out. No. Our energy spews from the Dazzler's being flooding back into the body of the one who, from beyond. Drained. She falls, reeling from the sudden overwhelming influx of energy equal to all the other energy in existence times a thousand. The one from beyond cannot react in time. Allison Thrak! The last vestiges of my energies which lingered in her aura are flowing back into me, but that means she's dead. It's my fault. She wasn't used to the power. Her perceptions hadn't yet adjusted. She didn't know how high up she was, and now she's dead. But worse, she does not love me. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. How, how could she do this to me? Holy cow, get back! How could she? Bolt of pure force, born of the rage churning in the heart of the one from beyond knives upward. Slashing through space and time, instantaneous, a billion parsecs of Earth from Earth it strikes a galaxy and utterly obliterates it. Moments later, equally awesome energies, more calmly wielded, pull Alice and Blair back from the brink of truly irrevocable death and repair her shattered body. Hello, Allison. Wow, wow. I'm alright now. Boy, what I did was really stupid. I guess I was badly banged up, huh? Yes, you might say that. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to open my eyes and see you. I don't know how long I was unconscious. Minutes. It seemed like forever, and it sounds silly, but I missed you. I love you. Do you? Totally, completely, sincerely. Hey, don't you think it's about time you told me your name? What should I call you? A taxi? Good enough. A taxi. Let's get married. Huh? Please? She's having total memory loss, probably. I bet they have some nice wedding gowns right here in this shopping center. Let's go see. Gee, it's kind of crowded in here. It is. I only have eyes for you, lover. Actually, I think we're being mobbed because of this spectacle we made of ourselves outside. Whatever, let's get ourselves some breathing space. You're so wonderful, I'll never get over it. Allison, I can't go through with this. I, I'm making you act the way you're acting. You don't really love me. What? Don't be silly, darling. I love you more than... No! You don't. But I love you. Too much to abuse you this way. You were right. It isn't any good if it isn't real. I release your mind, Allison. Oh. In a moment, you will forget all that happened. You will believe that we simply had a grand adventure together, an adventure that has it ended. And then I shall return you whence I found you, and it will be my turn to try to forget. Broken heart. Next, one month from now, the threads of our epic saga are gathered again in Secret Wars 2, number 5, featuring the X-Men, the New Mutants, the Avengers, and more. Be sure to be here for Despair. Right on. Right on, guys. That was Secret Wars 2. The four. Sorry it wasn't real. But that's the only one in the series that isn't. Love the story. I wonder why I didn't buy it. I'll still buy it though if I find it. Multiple copies. Thanks for joining me.
Uh, stay tuned for issue number five real soon. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Best love story I ever heard. Better than Twilight. Definitely. I'm going to the bathroom now.